Greater Boston has been nominated in several categories in this year's Audioverse Awards, an annual competition that recognizes excellence in audio drama. Uh, we're, we're very honored to be included, and we hope that you'll go check out the Audioverse Awards. There's a link in the show notes, and you can vote for your favorite audio drama podcasts, which maybe that's us. But whether it is or it isn't, please go show some love to the, to the shows you love. This is this is this is Greater Boston. It turned out being the boss was actually pretty fun. Extinction Event wasn't sure why this surprised him. It was only natural that with greater autonomy and power came greater life satisfaction. As managing editor over all of Third Sight Media, he now had the power to make positive changes throughout the company, as well as to delegate responsibilities to free himself to focus on bigger picture issues. He had tackled so many of the office's major problems in the past few months, though the responses from his subordinates were strangely unpredictable. Most everyone had applauded his decision to install a unisex bathroom, for instance. Yet, hardly anyone had appreciated his purge of back-wrecking chairs from the office, in favor of ergonomic kneeling stools. A few of the older employees had even quit in protest. He couldn't understand it. It was like people enjoyed back pain or something. But it hardly mattered. Extinction Event was used to having his efforts underappreciated. He reminded himself that doing good rarely earned a claim. You just had to press on, securing the satisfaction that doing good is its own reward. There had been some downsides, of course. Taking over Gemma's office was a mixed blessing. The extra space and privacy were certainly welcome, not to mention the direct access to the publisher, him or herself, via the pneumatic communication tubes. Extinction Event could finally be sure that his thoughts and suggestions were getting through to the person at the top. The very first thing he'd done was send a thank you note up the tube. Dear Mr. Ms. Publisher, I am greatly honored that you have seen fit to elevate my status to that of managing editor over all Third Sight publications. I have no doubt that you will find me a more earnest and devoted leader than Gemma ever was. I intend to delight you with the rigor and efficacy of my efforts to educate Third Sight readers and spread our edifying message to the ignorant masses. With humble regards, Extinction Event Paletti. And a response had come back practically immediately. It just says, good. Extinction Event appreciated the confidence in his competence exuded by that one-word response. What more needed to be said, after all? Next, he'd begun the more odious task, dealing with Gemma's leavings in the office. It was a disaster of paperwork, piles of half-proofread article drafts leaning against the walls, some of them dating back decades. Her actual file cabinets might well have been altars to the gods of chaos, all divided up according to some labeling system he could discern no meaning from. There were file drawers labeled Crank, Loon, and Cuckoo Bird, and other drawers labeled Never Mind and Who Gives a Shit. One drawer was cryptically marked Purple. It seemed that once Gemma had filed something away, she had no interest in ever being able to find it again. Her desk was no better. Laid out on it were a number of unanswered Dear Persephone letters that Gemma had abandoned when she left the company. Extinction Event had passed those over to Michael, handed him the whole job of writing the official advice column. In one of the desk drawers, he'd found several boxes of earplugs and a Walkman with crumbling foam headphones and several audio cassette collections of the best pop hits of the 70s and 80s. In another desk drawer, he'd found a strange handwritten list that sounded like the inner monologue of a would-be murderer. Fire, sledgehammer, bowling alley, hippopotamus, trash compactor, lob, acid bath, bread loaf, Shooting gallery. For some reason, of all of those, that single word, lob, made Extinction Event more anxious than any of the others. He'd shuddered, and then thrown the list away. 
he decided the rest of the files should follow. There was no making any sense of any of it, so Extinction Event decided it was best to just start fresh. So he called Tyrell into his office and gave him instructions to dispose of everything and took himself on a walk around the whole office to survey his new domain. There were nearly two dozen people under Extinction Event's purview. Line editors and copy editors and layout editors and researchers and graphic designers and one young woman who was apparently the official Third Sight podcast producer. He figured he probably ought to find out what was up with that. He observed all the people at their work, in their offices, in the break room, at the copy machine. He saw problems in their auras, dissatisfactions manifested as swirling blots amidst the pools of color, loneliness and exhaustion and boredom in fungal shades of plum and avocado and pumpkin. He returned to his office intent to get to work, to draw up plans, to solve problems. He was pleased to find Tyrell just finishing up with the expunging of Gemma's detritus. He was pleased to have such a diligent and eager assistant. Sometimes over-eager. Sometimes a little clingy. But so be it. Tyrell's aura was refreshing, at least. Always such a lovely sunshine yellow. Eternally cheering. Extinction Event settled in at his desk, ready to begin his task. But he was very quickly interrupted by a canister arriving via the tube to the upper floor. He fetched it immediately, eager to see what essential instructions his patron had for him. He wants me to buy him a sandwich? Tuna salad? He can't really expect me to procure animal flesh for him. He can't expect me to serve as his mule of carnal sadism. Yes, you. This is your job now. Don't forget the extra celery? Oh. Oh, indeed. Extinction Event retrieved his coat from the coat hook and headed out the door on his first official task as managing editor of Third Sight Media. Greater Boston is written and produced by Alexander Danner and Jeff Van Driesen. This episode featured James Capabianco as Extinction Event Paletti, Lydia Anderson as Gemma Linzer Coolidge, and Alexander Danner as the narrator. Charlie on the MTA demo track recorded by Emily Peterson and Dirk Tiedy. Drums by Jim Johansson. Ruffles and Flourishes and Hail to the Chief are performed by the U.S. Army Band. Now, more listening recommendations to enjoy through the Greater Boston hiatus. First up, The Infinite Now, with dispatches from across the time stream. This is a really weird one. I'm not even going to try to describe it, but we love it and we want you to go listen. Next, Winnebago Warrior from Audio Oblivious Productions is a clever contemporary Western pastiche and very funny. And finally, Lily Beacon's post-apocalyptic awesome fun time podcast fully lives up to that name with weekly broadcasts by a very pregnant mother of a demon reporting live from the post-rapture world. So that's three fun podcasts that we hope you'll check out, and we'll see you again in three weeks.